step into the ring. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Florida Atlantic University Smash Esports Open, brought to you by Bravis Esports. We're here with Florida Atlantic University's finest Smash players, and we are going to be bringing you as much of that action as we possibly can on this stream. There will be some matches that are played off, and if you're interested in finding those matches, there is a bracket link. Um, for those of you who haven't seen it yet, it was posted in Announcements. Um, so we're going, I'm going to post that really quick in the chat as well, just so you guys can keep track while you're at home. Not sure why I'm still logged into Bravis Esports 3, but that works, I guess. <laughs> so there it is in the chat. That's the link that we're working with here. I am Gem, um, so Stratagem is what you will see in the Discord as my tag, and I'll be commentating through all of this with you today. So first matchup that we're going to have is between Little Giant and Geppetto. This, I believe, is a uh, winner's round one match. Yes, so um, we do have a buy round for a couple of our players. So two of them will start in winner's round two, but we're seeing the one that starts in winner's round one. So in case you're watching and haven't seen... Stream Lobby ID and Stream Lobby Password are both in the announcements channel on the Discord. Um, I suppose I could also show you those right here. So we've got our ID in the upper right. So you can use that to try and get in here. All right, so it looks like Little Giant is here and then Geppetto is on a DQ timer. Um, just in case we haven't seen yet, uh, it's going to be important that if your opponent is not showing up for their match, that you inform a TO that that is happening, because uh, we want to keep the tournament moving and you know get us through this, so we're not here for an extra long time. And in order to do that, we need to know if someone's not showing up. So feel free to you know let the TO know, hey, so and so hasn't responded yet. And then if they do respond, you're good to go. If they don't respond, we'll put them on a five minute timer and we won't take up too much of your time waiting for them. So that's the play there. Looks like we've got It's Milo. Let's see who that is, if I can figure it out. Using my big, massive brain. I would guess that this is Little Giant for a couple of different reasons. That's what I'm going to go with there. All right. It's interesting, Little Giant has two different profile pictures somehow on Discord. I'm not sure how she's managing that. Um, but one is like, I think Buttercup from the Powerpuff Girls. And then one of them, man, I don't, I wish I recognized that character. But they're both girls with like a really similar hairstyle. And then Byleth is pretty close to that too. They, they, they all match up, you know. It's consistency. So yeah, we'll see if uh, Geppetto shows. And if Geppetto doesn't show, then we can keep Little Giant on and put them up against Zerg instead. Um, 
So it's not like uh, we're going to have to just dip out of this lobby. We can just throw Zerg in instead. That'll keep things moving along, and it'll also make sure that we still have a stream match to be played here. But we're going to give... Uh, we're gonna give Geppetto, like that on the name for a second. We're gonna give Geppetto a chance to respond and uh, see if they're able to get on here. It's the first match of the day, you know, sometimes you get a little confused, sometimes you're not looking where you're supposed to be, you don't have the routine figured out yet for how to compete in one of these tournaments, so we'll give him a second. Let me see, when was the, uh, the announcement made on the Q timer 101? Okay. Oh, already be cute. Okay. So let's get Zerg up onto the stream then. Zerg McSings, as they are in Florida Atlantic's uh, Discord server here. I'm like, I'm thinking about Z like Emperor Zerg from Toy Story. I'm thinking about a musical involving that character. And that seems really hype. I, I, I would definitely pay to see that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we know Zerg's in here. They, they posted their friend code a few minutes ago. Although they do have themselves set to do not disturb, so maybe they're going to miss the ping. Hmm. Ah, there they are. Perfect. All right. With the Shantae profile avatar. Okay. So I like to play a little game here while they're uh, taking care of their stage strikes, you know, picking their characters, all of that, that pre-game stuff. I like to guess whether the profile avatar actually reflects the character they're going to play. So obviously Shantae, that's a pretty easy one. Um... It's not a character in Smash. Zerg is not going to be able to play that. But Byleth is little giant a Byleth player. I, I'm i going to go out and guess no. Because I feel like there's probably... That probably is consistent with the like Discord profiles. I'm guessing that that's just like for the look and not for the character that she plays. But I could be wrong here. But uh, I definitely throw people off with my own. Um, I have the Splatoon icon because I am a competitive Splatoon 2 player, but I'm actually a Palu main in this game. I can only hope that every now and again, having that token is giving me just a little bit of an edge because the player who's up against me is like, ah, oh, he's going to play, he's going to play Inkling. I'm going to try and counter Inkling. Hey, wait, Palu, that's lame. Kind of like the, the trick where you have uh, a Pikachu in Pokemon, let's say, and you name him Rayquaza. Someone just like, it's psychological warfare, you know? You, you freak him out, like, wait a minute, he's throwing that in? Oh, oh, no, no, he's not throwing that in. What? Gotta, get, gotta wear him down, you know? Gotta, gotta break their spirits. So, for those of you who are maybe a little bit less familiar with the, the process here, what's happening between, between these two players right now is they are given a list of five stages. Uh, you can find that in Match Procedure if uh, you haven't checked that out already. And the starter list is what they're striking from to begin with. Starter, the very first match. Um, there are five stages there. Each of them will ultimately ban two of those stages. And that will leave you with one stage left. So they have an equal amount of say over which stage they go to. But the stage that they go to is still the least disliked, I suppose you could say, of the stages for both both players. 
once that stage is decided on, they will just each select that stage to guarantee that the game will take them there. And uh, they'll also have their characters chosen ahead of time so that they, you know, make the decision on the stage choice based on the correct information. And it looks like they're both in that selection process now, which should mean that uh, at least some of those decisions have been made. Violet Gem says, hey, Zerg. We'll see if Zerg notices. Zerg is in the, in the process of uh, getting the match started here, so they might be a little distracted, but we'll make sure to pass on the message, Violet. Violet name, cheering for Zerg with the profile avatar with the violet hair. It was just meant to be. Got a couple of Zerg fans in the chat. You love to see it. Love to see the support. All right, Zerg's in the arena. See what little giant ends up choosing here. All right, looks like they're ready to go. And a big heart in the chat. Alright, here we go. We've got the Blonde Pit. Angel Boy. And then we've got a Joker on the side of Little Giant. So I was correct that that was not the character choice. Like I usually am. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, here we go. And we got a little giant fan in the chat, too. This is perfect. You'll love it. All right. Zerg getting things started with a flurry attack from center stage. But interrupted. So you see uh, little giants trying to make good use of the uh, run cancel forward smash. Doing a lot of little foxtrots. Trying control some space here. And the side B just catches her out. Don't know to watch out for that from neutral from here. Another side B. See how integral that is to uh, Zerg's game plan here. Getting some good pop-ups, but not a lot of really big follow-ups here. It's really just kind of been that uh, Zerg has won neutral a few more times. Forward air off the edge. Giant gonna have no problem recovering from that, but does get caught by the up tilt. Big forward smash coming through, though. Paying a lot of respect to the recovery at the ledge. Looking like she doesn't even want to try and edge guard. She just wants to let him get back and win neutral. Might be a good option to apply a little bit more pressure than that, although you know, Pit does have a solid recovery. You're probably not going to prevent him from getting to the ledge, necessarily. Might be able to... Uh, catch him. He doesn't have the room to retreat, though. Throwing out a lot of these forward smashes is a little giant. Ooh, there's Arsene. Let's see if uh, the extra damage can power up one of those attacks. Get a KO off here. That almost does it, actually. There's a couple jabs. And the big forward smash comes through, so a little giant's 
brings the stock count even, though she is a bit behind on damage right now. Trying to reach with those forward tilts and just a little bit out of range. Good job on Zerg knowing the reach of it and uh, being able to weave around it. Gets a grab, gets a down throw, doesn't quite get the follow-up off of it. Ooh, and armors through the attack with the side beast. Now it's almost a full stock lead for Zerg. There's another side B. Seems like Little Giant's swinging a little bit from the uh, center there. Might want to play a little bit more reactively, a little bit more responsive to what the opponent is doing. Because a lot of these options are really good and are like often known to be really safe, great spacing tools. Um, but no matter how good the spacing tool is, if you're swinging at thin air, you're not going to hit much. Might also be that there is a, a little bit of an adjustment that needs to be made here. This is the first time that we have uh, played a match in this tournament so far for either of these players, which means that they might still be adjusting to the latency. Um, so maybe there are some timing adjustments that need to come through more as a result of the state of the game that they're playing than necessarily their actual reaction speed or anything like that. There's a big Nair coming through. Zerg oh, catches with the up air, but doesn't get the full thing. Oh, no. Okay. Whew. Little giant with the clutch air steer back in towards the ledge. Unfortunately, does get caught by an up smash from Zerg, and Zerg is going to take the first game. The little Giant definitely came out swinging, was playing pretty aggressively, trying to control center stage with those tilts, with those forward smashes. Zerg finding a way to weave in and around those attacks and punish them on with whenever they happened. So we'll see how well both players can adjust. We'll see if uh, there are any changes to their play style, any changes to the character choice. They do have the option to change stages as well, so that's going to make something of a difference. Didn't seem like either of them were really doing much to play around the platforms in that game. They kind of just stuck to, stuck to center stage. Um, almost might as well have been a match on FD. But uh, we get a stage with maybe some lower platforms that might start playing into it. Joker does have some interesting tech if uh, L Little Giant knows it. Um, to get keep someone locked up on certain platforms at a certain height. Okay. On some of the, we have a whole bunch of different Twitch accounts because we might run, you know, five tournaments on a single day at the same time. Uh, on some of the accounts, Nightbot is just a maniac and times people out for 10 minutes automatically. So I'm glad to see that it's only timing people out for five seconds for that sort of stuff. <laughs> Get your game on, go play, hey now. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I apologize for what just happened. Ooh, ooh, big announcement coming through just before this match started. <laughs> uh, big, big announcement coming through for both tournaments tonight. So there will be a Smash tournament later on at 8 p.m. Um, what happened was there was a little bit of a mix-up with the uh, the time that the tournament was meant to be at. Um, I believe on an Instagram post, it was stated that uh, both of the tournaments today were going to be at 8 p.m., whereas the actual schedule is supposed to be that this one, of course, starts at 4. So since the second tournament, which was an NBA 2K tournament, only had one registrant, and so there's no tournament to be had there. You're just like, all right, let's run a second Smash tournament. And that way, all of the people who weren't able to compete in the tournament right now will have an opportunity to compete later on. Um, so honestly, if you want to, you might just, like, come back in. I don't know if we have a second registration document for the other tournament, but, like... Just come play again if you want to. I don't see any reason you wouldn't. Um, 
but at both tournaments, the one, this one and the one at 8 p.m., the prizing will be for first place, a gaming mouse, a, game, a uh, gaming keyboard, and a blue microphone, which is nuts. Like, that, that'll, that's a lot of hardware to set you up. That's awesome. And then second place, you're going to get a wireless gaming headset and an LED webcam. So those those are some pretty exciting prizes. Like that's Ready? that sets you up for for streaming kind of prizing. All right, we do have a switch here. It looks like we're going from pit to do I have this right? Yes, we have. We're going from pit to Pokemon trainer. Just making sure we had the uh, characters swapped around. Three, there we go. Two, one, so little giant sticking to the Joker. Zerg coming out here with this squirrel. Oh, already way off stage. Having to recover. Zerk opens it up with a couple dash attacks. Squirtle very fast and mobile, uh, even more so than Pit, so might pose a bit of a challenge to Little Giant, who seems to be having some trouble keeping Zerg pinned down. Um, the, uh, the fast movement to bait out something like a forward smash or a forward tilt. And that Charizard just goes out there and finishes it with a forward air. Powerful edge guard there from Zerg. Got the side B coming out. Bunch of forward smashes. The little Giant might want to mix up the game plan just a little bit here. Given that it seems like Zerg has caught on to the attack pattern. A couple jabs. Not a ton of damage, but it'll get something done. I like the projectile use there. Keeping Zerg honest from distance. There's a dash attack. I also like how uh, Little Giant, uh, when she wanted to hit the dash attack, retreated a little bit. Give herself the space to throw it out there. Does seem to have the spacing on that dash attack down really well. Oh, great interrupt there. I think uh, that was supposed to be a flare blitz. It got interrupted before it came out. That one, however, does not get interrupted. And now, Little Giant finds herself on last stock. Zerg going to stick to the Charizard this time. Um, Charizard having the heavier weight and the strongest recovery of the three. And so, he's going to want to uh, stick to that for the survivability. Get as much as he possibly can off of this final stock. He's actually threatening to take this stock right now. Gets the up air off the top. And it was a ton of damage that Zerg was sitting on but does not end up dropping a stock. Zerg will take the set two to nothing. All right. So with that plugged into the bracket here, I believe we called uh, AK Blu-ray versus uh, Piazzi. Is that right? Okay, so just now it was reported that they're at 1-1. So they'll have one more match to play, but as soon as that match is finished, we will have the winner of AK Blu-ray and Piazzi versus Zerg. Zerg has uh, played his way up into winner's finals, actually. Um, already at a pretty advanced point in the bracket. Those of you who aren't aware, a double elimination bracket, uh, winner's finals are the two undefeated players that remain. One of them will advance to grand finals, which is the point at which they might actually win the tournament. The other will drop into Losers Finals, where they play up against the strongest player who's been able to fight their way through the lower bracket. Um, and there is still the potential for the player from Losers Bracket to dethrone the player from Winners. They just have to come up into Grand Finals and beat them twice. If you're still a little bit confused about how that might be working, and you want to see it spelled out for you, bracket is right there. You can check that out and see how it's going to run.
But for the time being, we got a little while to chill together. How's it going, everybody? How is the the labbing of Steve been going? Y'all having a good time figuring out how weird and broken that character might be? See, well, okay, you can't see anymore, but uh, I've got my character set to Steve right now. He's so bizarre, and it's I, I think it's such a, a curiosity in the game of Smash. They've added some stuff in this character that, like, nobody else has ever had in the game before, so... Clean mic, okay, I see you. I would get it off, off camera, but if I do that, it's getting pretty far away from me. Like, down here, probably can't hear nearly as well as you could. I don't even know if you can hear me at that point. But, uh... HyperX was kind enough to sponsor us. Uh, they gave us the, the headset I'm using. They gave us the... Okay, well, the keyboard I'm using is actually uh, my old one because I may or may not have accidentally spilled soup on my first one. Whoops. Um, but the mouse as well, they, they just set us up. It was really nice of them. Um, I, th I think it kind of... People call it the lightsaber mic, and I kind of see it like... It's like s some Sith Lord stuff that we're on here. But yeah, I, I was so happy that it came through because I, I actually needed a new set of headphones at the time. Um, so it was really convenient to be getting right when we did. Needs the sound effects. I might be able to handle that with some, some OBS trickery. Well, hold, hold, hold on, you have intrigued me. You have intrigued me. swinging it. I gotta keep swinging it. <laughs> alright, alright. There we go. There we go. Perfectly in sync. Let's go. It didn't feel in sync, let me tell you that. <laughs> Friend has that mic and accidentally mutes himself all the time. Oh, yeah, so... One thing that's really cool about this is all you have to do to, to put it to bed is just act like a loving father and give it a pat on the head. I'm saying words, I'm saying words, I'm saying words, I'm saying words, like that. So you just like, good night, little friend. That's kind of how it goes. Um, but the the thing that catches me all the time, because I don't do that by accident most of the time, but what does happen is uh, my cat will come up and sit in my lap, right? And on the bottom, let's see if I can rotate it. Yeah, there you go. This knob is the gain knob. You can hear that it's probably changing a little bit as I move it up and down. And that is exactly the point at which my cat will try and rub his face up against it. So anytime the cat gets in my lap, I'm like, okay, okay well, what's going on? What's going on? And I, I might not notice. And all of a sudden, I'm like way louder or way quieter than I think I am. And people are like, hey, we can't hear you anymore. What happened? It's the cat's fault. It needs googly eyes. <laughs> Where, where would where would you put the eyes exactly? Like, I'm, I'm curious now. Where, where do the eyes go on this microphone? Where do they belong? Want to give it googly eyes and a feather boa? I feel like that kind of improves any inanimate object, to be fair. We do have uh, Piazzi coming through against AK Blu-ray. It was a 2-1, so a close match there in winner's round two. Uh, Piazzi has advanced to play against Zerg here. We do have Zerg coming into the arena. We'll have Piazzi shortly. Googly eyes would be the icing on the cake. Eyes facing us, of course. Oh, okay, okay. So you probably want them like maybe right about here. So that there's a little bit, I mean, obviously a little bit off center for the eyes. That's only, only fair, but you wouldn't want it going across like this line or something. You know, these are, these are the sideburns, right? 
So, yeah, you wouldn't want to do something like that. Like the paper clip from old school. <laughs> you know, the, not a lot of people have fond memories, per se, of that little guy, but... No, I totally get it. I totally get it. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right. Piazzi has made their way into the arena here. So we've seen that Zerg has a Pokemon trainer. We've also seen that Zerg has a pit. So remains to be seen where they'll actually end up. And we just haven't seen anything from Piazzi. So we'll put them down as a Bayonetta, because that's the first in alphabetic order. We'll fix it in a second. Up on top of the black part. Hmm. So, like, up here. I could see that working. They'd have to be small googly eyes. I was thinking, like, the, the big, you know, size of a, size of a quarter sized googly eyes but yeah if you just stick a couple little eyes right up here i think you might be onto something the only trick would be getting to them to stay on because they would be flat and it's a rounded edge that we're trying to stick them to but more difficult problems have been solved in the history of human engineering All right, here we go. They're in the arena. Ready? And we've got a plant. We've got a potted plant. A grass type, probably, so... We'll see how it goes against the Squirtle in the early runnings on a Pokemon Stadium here. That would, uh... Seem like an immediate switch that the uh, Piranha Plant's trainer would want to make, but... Oh, it looks like he's opting to stick him in. Maybe he's just at a, a higher level. Maybe he's got a better EV spread. We'll, we'll have to see. Throwing out those spike balls. It's always a uh, tenet of Piranha Plant play. You're going to see a lot of those. Also trying to make use of the poison cloud here. Um, Ivysaur is a poison type, so once again, the typing advantage not really going to go in his favor with that one. But Ooh, the spike ball coming through. Always going to be good damage, always going to be good for positioning. The trick is just, you're so vulnerable while you're throwing it out there, and if you get interrupted like you just did, um, that can be a problem. It's also a very predictable angle that's going to come out. So you know roughly where you're safe on either side of it. There it is again, Zerg doing a great job of interrupting in the middle of the... Ooh. No up B coming out from Piazzi. Maybe he thought he had a double jump and uh, didn't press up B in time, but the up B from Piranha Plant definitely going to get him back up. Great job making up for it, though. Is able to get the stock off of the spike ball, and so now we're just at dead even again. Ooh, big forward smash comes through. Tries to get the spike ball out, and he just runs too close to Zerg while doing it. Um, I think that's been a lot of the openings that Zerg has gotten so far. It's just been from the spike ball coming out when uh, Zerg is a little too close to him for that to be safe. Zerg been doing a good job of uh, kind of bobbing and weaving through these uh, matches so far. Knowing when his opponent is vulnerable and getting in to uh, punish at the right time. Oh, the spike ball knocking him out of the air. Anti-aircraft cannon here. They both recover, a Dragon Ball Z moment there. Zerg able to get an edge guard situation, gets the Nair. Piazzi this time get early enough with the up B, makes it back, and dodges away from that smash attack. A little bit overzealous from Zerg, but not punished. Ooh, Piazzi trying to come straight down on top of them, and that's the one angle the spike ball definitely is never going to cover. So Zerg gets a free hit, and it was enough to do the stock. So we've seen Zerg survive on these stocks for a long time as the Charizard. Uh, the pressure is on Piazzi for sure to find a KO move. Now the Spike Balls are going to do it if he is able to land one, but uh, Zerg at this point has seen that that is a pretty big part of his game plan and it gets mixed up on him. Piazzi throws his uh, 
throws his head out <laughs> at very high velocity. And that is able to take the stock. So, 100 damage, that's a pretty big deficit to overcome, but crazier things have happened in this game of Super Smash Brothers. Goes for the forward smash, a little bit too slow of a move to punish the opening that he had. Zerg gonna catch him off the top, it looks like, with that up B. Zerg taking game one against Piazzi in winner's finals. Now, this is a best of five set being winner's finals here, so this isn't as big of a deficit as uh, Piazzi could be in. Watering the plant, like well, maybe overwatered. So, uh, <laughs> watering the plant seems like that would that would be good for it. I don't know. This is a plant that spits fireballs. Maybe the typical rules don't actually apply here. World's first hybrid grass fire type? Question mark. Trying to think of what how Nintendo how Pokemon team would make that typing a reality. Its name would be Controla Burn. <laughs> I don't know. Forest Fryer would be its final evolution. Plant needs water, but Zerg brought the juice. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Let's rev it up. Rev up those nooches, kids. Man, that is a reference that I doubt anybody gets anymore. Alright, Nightbot, what's the threshold? What's the threshold that you're you're cutting people off at? This is seeming a little bit excessive. We'll have to see. is disabled. It's not even going to time out users. Am I logged into the right profile here? I think so. Oh, you know what? Maybe it was because I was signed in as uh, MC Sports 3. Someone try spamming caps real quick. Just like type like a hundred of them. Ah, just like type a bunch of A's or something. Okay, so Syncrity can do it, but Syncrity's a mod. That's really weird, because I thought I had that turned off. So we'll have to go in and experiment with that. All right, so we got the Grandpa Kong coming in here against Piazzi. Piazzi opting to go to Kalos, uh, which I can understand. It's a great uh, platform height for him to be able to cover with the spike balls. Ooh, big up smash. My goodness, he got to charge that for a while. Poison Cloud... Doing some damage there, but uh, it's not actually great for zone control because you can just kind of move straight through it. Does not actually impede movement in the slightest. It causes no stun. You are the winner, though, because you have banana bread. Yeah, I've... nobody is winning anywhere near as hard as Violet is right now. I have consistently been, been impressed with... The recipe of banana bread that like it's so impossible to make bad banana bread i've never had it 
I've never seen anyone mess it up. The, I guess you can burn it. I guess that's possible. But I've never seen it happen. There's never been any ban bad banana bread in my life. Oh, that was such a slick read. I'm surprised it didn't hit. Zerg is probably uh, sweating a little bit after that one. But being able to survive that, you know, Donkey Kong, a very heavy character, and does have rage now. So we'll see how much extra damage that'll let Zerg tack on before the forward smash finds him in the back. And he's down to his last stock of this game. Piazzi staging a great comeback right now. Ooh, big forward air comes through into the up smash. Lots of damage, but the up B is a little bit over aggressive. Piazzi punishes. Not able to make good on the edge guard, though, and Zerg rolls behind and gets a forward smash. This is definitely even right now. Donkey Kong lives a long time. So the little bit of an extra damage lead that Piazzi has, not super relevant right now. A couple jabs, gets the knockdown, doesn't guess the right direction for the forward smash. And the forward air comes through just dunking him. Zerg pulls that out of nowhere. And what looked like it was going to be an easy uh, easy time putting himself on the scoreboard there for Piazzi. Zerg turns it right around and takes basically a, a full stock lead back for himself. If you make it with rancid nuts, that's a bad time. Oh god, that sounds like you're speaking from experience, and I am so sorry. That does sound like a bad time. Granted, I generally would not put nuts in my banana bread. I'm not against nuts in things. Just with banana bread, like I, I want the, the spongy texture, you know? I want it to be like like chewing on a cloud. A banana flavored cloud. Activated Zerg's trap card spike. But with candied pecans, banana bread is enhanced. Okay, that I will grant you. That does sound really good. All right, here we go. We've got what is now three winner's bracket points in a row. Uh, Zerg feeling pretty comfortable, probably. And this might be a good opportunity for Zerg to experiment with the character roster here, um, just to get some more data on how his other characters might do. Um, yeah, it, he's probably going to be running into, you know, there's a high likelihood anyway that he runs into Zerg in Grand Finals again. Um, obviously, Zerg could drop the set in Loser's Finals, and it could be somebody else, but um, in the event that this is the Grand Finals set we see, this might be an opportunity for Zerg to get a little bit more data on, okay, which characters are really working well for me, so that when that Grand Final comes, has as much information as he possibly can. He, you see that happening sometimes. Uh, where somebody who plays a whole bunch of different characters is just seeing okay, which ones are feeling good today, which ones are warm, which ones are doing the things they're supposed to, how, who am I executing well with, who has a good matchup against this player's characters. That's the sort of information you might gather from it. Or, I don't know, maybe he just rotates on them to, to, to make a point. <laughs> I stress big. <laughs> well... I am sure that the results of the baking relieve stress for more than just you. Also, uh, any, anytime you want to, you know, get rid of the banana bread, feel free to just, you know, send it my way. Just a thought. In case, you know, you know, don't have anyone who's, uh, who's willing to, to put it, put it down. I'll, I'll do that service for you. I got you.
Curious who Zerg will pull out for this round. Yeah, it's been a lot of different characters for Zerg. We've seen the Pokemon trainer, I think, the most. Um, they ran Blonde Pit for the very first game that they played on stream here. And now they've also shown the Donkey Kong. I don't know why I'm specifying Blonde Pit so much. It's just like... It's such a striking picture. Like, it, it, his hair is kind of like neon. It feels like unnatural that his hair is that bright. It's like inkling ink yellow. Holy hair. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, I guess it might be more in keeping with, like, the, the a, a, a biblical account of an angel, or they're, like, like shining to the point where you, you must shield your eyes from the brilliance or whatever. Maybe, maybe that's the idea. Maybe he's Super Saiyan. Maybe they're one and the same. Maybe, maybe the Christmas angels were really just, you know... A bunch of Saiyans dropping through to say hi. Does that make Jesus Goku? I don't know. I don't know. Palatina seems like a much different character than, say... The, the Christian deity. She seems more like, uh... She's got some, like, attitude to her, you know? Like, ha have you seen how extra her entrance is? Her entrance animation? She just, like, magically creates these big golden doors and struts through them on high heels to, to kick some butt. Like, th there's some spunk to her. <laughs> She's got a little bit of attitude. Random? Excuse me? I I can't even get the overlay set yet. Okay, okay. So we got we got Zerg on K Rule, and then we've got a Game and Watch from Piazzi. So the random was actually from Piazzi, it wasn't from uh, Zerg. She's just throwing the pasta at the wall, seeing if it sticks. In keeping with the food metaphors, I suppose. Two palms would be that I would trip and fall on my face. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it... It is kind of a flex to wear heels into battle like that, you know? It's like... I don't know if any of you play League of Legends, but uh, Jax fights with, like... A, a lamp post and one of his voice lines is imagine if I had a real weapon that's kind of the vibe that I get like the, these mortals I'm gonna I'm gonna give them a chance I'm gonna give them a little bit of a handicap you know not gonna just like smite them with with hellfire right now I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna walk in and let them think they've got a chance. So it looks like Piazzi might be kind of giving up on the idea of winning and is just trying to hit a nine before the uh, match is over. You have to think after this many attempts that it's gonna come out soon. The RNG is uh, not truly random. It does it doesn't exactly have cycles, it's not predictable per se, but based on what the last hammer was, you can... The odds shift. Um, you're never going to get the same one twice in a row, for example. Oh my goodness. With the suicide down air that doesn't even actually KO, Zerg gets a pretty uncontested three stock there to close out winner's finals. All right.
that will do it. Um, I guess they're just going again. Um, let's see. Do we have another match that's going to be showing up on stream here? Uh, oh, okay. So 20 minutes ago, roughly speaking, it was called that uh, Blu-ray and Giant are going to be playing off stream. So I guess we're kind of just chilling until that ends up. Okay, they're just chilling here for the time being. We got someone else in here looking like, uh, I imagine this is AK Blu-ray, actually. Um, Cole. So we'll need Zerg to uh, step out of the arena. I'm just gonna give him the boot real quick. No hard feelings, just, you know, kicking you. Um, because... Okay, so... What's going on right now is uh, Losers Finals. This is Piazzi versus AK Blu-ray. AK Blu-ray being Cole, I would assume. I would assume that's the only person who would join the arena here. So there aren't that many other people that know the super secret password. Alrighty. So a quick reminder, this is going to be best of five. Five. You have to win three matches to be, to, for it to be done. I think what happened there between Zerg and Piazzi, because um, that one was supposed to be best of five as well. I don't think they realized it was supposed to be best of five. I think they thought it was over at the best of three. And so the match that they played for game three was a little bit goofy. Um, I just want to make sure that y'all don't go and uh, kind of throw away the uh, a, a match that is still a part of the tournament like we did with that one. <laughs> Best of five all the way through. First to three is another way to put that. Winner of this will have the right to go up into grand finals and try and take out Zerg. Who will be our Buzz Lightyear? Got AK Blu-ray in there. Okay, so two characters we just haven't seen from either of these players yet. Piazzi on the Terry. And AK Blu-ray on Mute. Here, all right, here we go. Final Destination is where we've ended up starting. Final Destination is a pretty strong choice for, like, characters with a horizontal projectile. Um, there's really no place for another character to avoid that. They ha have to maybe jump over it, maybe shield it. Um, they can't just stand still on a platform, so... That might be a, a good choice for uh, AK Blue Ray here on the Mewtwo. With the uh, Shadow Balls, but it seems like they've been playing more aggressive. They've been playing more in Terry's face. Piazzi uh, has been very aggressive here. He's been throwing out a lot of moves, and uh, it seems like AK Blue Ray is ready to punish here and there. Worth noting that these two did meet in Winner's Round 2. At which point uh, Piazzi was able to take it two to one. 
So that was the closest set that we've had all day. It went to a, a game three in the best of three. So this one should be interesting. We haven't seen Piazzi play the Terry yet so far. Um, so it's interesting to think, is this an adaptation to the characters that they were playing before? Is this what was working best against AK Blu-ray before? They have that data, but uh, we don't have that data because we didn't see the match from earlier. Oof. Gets back up, runs right into the Shadow Ball. Um, you gotta have a plan for that. Especially when you see them just having charged it up, you know? If it's fresh on the Mewtwo's player's mind that they have a Shadow Ball. Big up smash comes out. I love the follow-up from AK Blu-ray there. Not trying to overcommit to jumping up in the air. Mewtwo doesn't have a very fast vertical. Instead, staying grounded and trying to catch Piazzi as Piazzi lands on it. Gets himself a good chunk of extra damage to keep things in the lead for him, even after he loses the stock. Tries to air dodge through and gets clipped by the uh, third part jab from Terry. Jab, a very dangerous tool with Terry. We haven't seen the combination from him yet, but, uh, oh no, did Piazzi mean that? Okay, he makes it back. Um, but Jab can combo. And as I say that, he gets a uh, forward smash. Jab with Terry can combo into the power dunk there, um, which does a good 30% damage or something off of a Jab. And it can KO with uh, not an insignificant percent. So that's one of those uh, bread and butters that you see out of Terry's a lot. And we didn't see it executed on there, so it might just not be tech that uh, Piazzi has learned. But a lot of those jab combinations that he was getting there, uh, if he goes jab one into that other combination, um, I think those openings that he gets out of that are a lot more dangerous. Might also be that he was so close to the ledge that he was worried about doing the uh, dive off the stage like we saw earlier. Uh, was able to recover from that, but um, it was a close call and you don't necessarily always want to be reacting to that. It's an easy way to uh, give something up early, especially if your opponent is able to recover quickly and come back and try and interrupt with an edge guard on the way up. Blu-ray stepping right back into the ring. Piazzi still making some choices here. Again, quick reminder, even if AK Blu-ray is able to take game two as well, the set is not over yet. This is a best of five, first to three. And we've got the Palatina coming out from Piazzi. Have not seen this yet either. Alright. Let's see what the Palo can do. Trying to get right up in Mewtwo's face, use those forward airs. It's a very fast zoning tool, and her air her speed in the air makes it uh, pretty excellent for getting a quick poke in and then getting away. Ooh, dash attack on shield. Definitely going to get punished there. Great jab combo. No extra follow-up from that, though. With the explosive light, the uh, up smash dodged away from, but... We're going to see Palutena with a lot of massively disjointed moves. That forward smash, that up smash. Obviously, the projectiles are supremely disjointed. Something like a, an explosive light or the auto reticle. So Palutena is just a very safe character. Even when she's closing distance, the dash attack that we saw there has invincibility on it because she is, of course, using a shield as she dashes in. And the back air has a similar property. So the forward smash. 
trying to catch the uh, ledge option with the neutral air, but Mewtwo just rolls straight through it. So good coverage by Piazzi, but a better response from AK Blu ray. Neutral air drag down. One of the tricks with learning Palatina early on is uh, figuring out what part of the neutral air you have to hit them with to get the drag down versus the upward knockback. Because uh, if you're doing a short hop nair, they might end up in a place that you didn't expect them to be. Great counter on the Shadow Ball. Not sure what the up B was, that it was intended to be. It might have been a uh, misinput. Because uh, Palatina does not have a, a hitbox on the up B. There's no damage that it will do. Maybe that was left over from one of the earlier characters that he was playing, you know? Maybe he was thinking, all right, so I'm pit, right? I just have to upbeat. Wait, I'm not pit. Oh, shoot. Actually, does pits have a hitbox? I'm mistaking it for Project M pit. That's my bad. He doesn't have a hitbox either. Piazzi gets the three stock. That's what, fifth character that we've seen Piazzi play? Something like that. It's been a lot of them. His grand finals after this set, yes. This is losers finals, so the winner of this match has earned the right to go up against Zerg in grand finals. Now in grand finals, remember, because this is a double elimination tournament and these players are coming from the losers bracket, Whoever wins this match will have to beat Zerg twice if they want to take the tournament. But I would say that winning here is still a huge W because that puts you into the prizing. And these prizes are really nice. Um, even just for second place, it's a wireless headset and shoot, what was the other part of it? Um, a webcam. All right, we're back in, and we've got a Greninja now coming out from AK Blue Ray. The pink one, of course. You know, I've heard that uh, that bright colors and frogs signal that they're uh, more poisonous. Let's we'll see if. Uh, that comes into play here. Is, is, is this a Greninja? Or is it a Toxicroak? Scratch. Tries to counter the up smash. Tries to counter multiple times. And uh, Piazzi not swinging at, swinging at him. Looking like AK Blu ray having a little bit of trouble repositioning with his Greninja. Uh, is a very fast character. You have to move pretty precisely to control him, and I'm sure the latency doesn't help with that. Ooh, catches him rolling with the up smash there. I love the angle of the up B to get himself a punish there, recognizing that Palatina was going to be in lag by the time he got there. And <laughs> they both whiff in opposite directions. Oh, oh no! All he had to do was hold up. She would have grabbed on, but... Gets himself stuck under the ledge. I don't know if he, like, mistook himself for the other character or something. Either way, able to even the stock count up immediately upon landing, so not a big deal, but... Might still be on that third stock, if uh, not for that error. Yazzie in there applying some zoning pressure. AK Blu ray overcommits for the edge guard, and so now they're back into neutral. Gets grabbed. There's the dash attack. Ooh, 
Nice use of the up and I love the up smash to follow up. Oh, get sniped out of the air with that up smash. Some big damage coming out there in the up air. That up air was scary. Uh, Palatina's up air is ridiculously powerful. It's one of her best KO options to just get an up air off the top. And the forward smash will finish things off. And the Nair. Big forward smash. I love this damage coming out of Piazzi. Great zone control. The upbeat doesn't really mess him up there, but he gets jabbed out. And so now... <laughs> fully charged Shuriken just taking him out right then and there. Piazzi comes right in with the shield bash, not letting AK Blu-ray get a chance to reset. Great jab combo. Blu-ray not... Covering the upward angle that, uh, oh no, the upbeat, oh, shoot, you hate to see it end on an error like that, but Piazzi will go up 2-1 in the set, and so now it's up to AK Blu-ray to make a stand here. See, that's what I'm saying. I think that this is a phenomenal track that Minecraft has brought into the game. All right, going out on the Lucina here. Blonde Lucina. Explosive light opens things up. Piazzi trying to apply some pressure, but doesn't get close enough to uh, land that up smash. Cole with a big up B that's going to get punished. Not as hard as it could have been. Gotta watch out with that up B. Um, it is going to put her in the, the special fall state. That is the state in which all you can do is drift in the air. And so... You're, if you up B, you're committing to a very long time of being stuck up there in the air. Side B will put Palatina off the ledge, but uh, the neutral will be a little bit telegraphed there. Piazzi not going to have trouble avoiding that and able to actually punish with a forward smash. That's a huge punish to get out of that. Takes the stock. Up B will be a great get off me option here, but not going to KO yet. Ooh, whew, Piazzi not respecting it that time falls right onto the tip of the sword. Looking like a Roman general out there. Explosive light into the auto reticle. Can sometimes be a true combo, by the way. Doesn't catch him with the hitbox, just a win box, and so that's gonna give uh, Blu-ray all the space that he wants. Big counter coming out! Oh my goodness, that was a KO move that got countered at KO percent. Blu-ray is gone for that one. But here we have a counter in return. This one not gonna KO immediately. Forward smash threatening, and I'm actually surprised it didn't swing in uh, hit in time on the ledge jump, but Piazzi gets out fairly safely. I'm surprised Piazzi not going for the grab there. The back throw most likely going to KO at that point. Side B comes out from AK Blu-ray. 
Oh, the up whiffs. I was expecting to roll in. No punish. Forward tilt will put Piazzi off stage. Dodges through the neutral B, but does not dodge the forward smash. AK Blu ray able to bring it to last stock. Tournament life depends on getting this stock right now. Piazzi with the auto reticle. Ooh, that's going to get countered. That almost KO'd. An insane amount of damage coming through. Oh, and Piazzi misses with the auto reticle. Looks the wrong way. Wrong way. Man, that move aims itself and you miss Don. <laughs> he was facing the wrong way. Easy to do, actually. Um, forward smash comes through. And he waits. He thought he'd waited long enough. He hadn't. The counter was still active. And Piazzi will take the entire set with Palatina in losers finals. So Piazzi will be advancing from there to play against Zerg. All right. Let's get Zerg back in here. Apologies for the kick, um, but having mul multiple pl extra players in the lobby does actually increase the tick rate, and so it makes it so that there's potentially more latency at the lobby. So we try and make sure that we only have the competitors and the spectator. We want Zerg. We want Zerg. We've found the Zerg. All right, chat, who you got? Who's taking home first place? Who, who's taking home first place and the gaming keyboard, mouse, and blue microphone? Honestly, second place isn't hurting either. They're getting a wireless gaming headset and an LED webcam. Um, and the same prizes, by the way, will be available to the winners of the 8 p.m. tournament that's coming up. Let's see, that would be in a little under three hours. I'm trying to do uh, time zone conversions in my head because we're in Arizona, so we're on funky time. Zergus Con. <laughs> Thinking Zergus got this if he can get around the uh, Palatina. We didn't actually see Piazzi using the Palatina against Zerg in their uh, set in Winner's Side. So it'll be interesting to see if that performs as well as it did in Losers against AK Blu ray. Okay, we've got a Falcon. First time that we've seen Captain Falcon all tournament. Here we go. Game one of Grand Finals. We're on Final Destination. It's fitting, honestly. Oh, a great setup to uh, start things off. Misses with the third hit there from Piazzi, so Zerg able to get down on the ground, but... Really blows the opportunity with an up B that uh, didn't hit anything. I'm surprised it didn't get punished. Auto reticle takes him out of the air. It's dash attacked. Oh, it doesn't hit the uh, up air to follow things up. Tries side B into up B. Great parry from Piazzi. Zerg rolls into a forward smash. No auto reticle though, so Zerg going to be able to get back on safely and just rolls into a forward smash again. Piazzi did that two or three times maybe. 
So we'll see if Zerg catches on in the future. Gets a dash attack, trying to finish her off with an up. He almost gets her off the top with that. Moves Clank. Big knee to the face, and Zerg... Man. Oh, Palatina's fillings are okay. Hope she has any teeth left. Oh no! The air dodge, I think. So Zerg and a huge deficit due to a pretty small error. Let's see what he can make happen here. Some good damage onto that. You know, if he keeps up that pace, this game isn't over yet. Oh, so much damage already. Oh, it's a forward smash though. He needs to not just be rolling into those. I love the use of the down B to get around that. That was a really creative angle. Can't dodge through that one. It is a long active hitbox. The down tilt with the insanely low angle. Oh, but misses the up smash. Side B. Doesn't go for the up B this time. Oh, but he's caught with the explosive light. This is a lot of damage that Zerg's taken at this point. Finishes it off with the back air, though. They are on the same stock, so there is still a chance. Falcon Kick comes through, gets countered on the dash attack. Yazi trying to put up this wall, not let him back on stage for free. Up smash out a little bit early to hit anything. Zerg able to capitalize with some big damage there, and the Uppy not even going to get punished because he falls faster. Oh, but that will get punished. The dash attack off the top going to do it, and Piazzi takes game one of Grand Finals set one. Both back in the ring. All right, so stick into the Palo. It seems like the Palo is uh, what's been working so far. Palo is what he's going to stick to. Zerg going back to the pit that we saw a good while back. I don't know why this is taking so long to start. That's actually concerning me a little bit. Okay, we're good. So can Pit rise up against his boss? Can he uh, fight his way to a pay raise or a promotion? Able to get in with a dash attack. Not finding any follow up on that dash attack, though. Side B coming through. Zerg was. Uh, a pretty heavy user of that side B in the previous match we saw. It was pretty effective at that time. Let's see if Piazzi has a better answer to it. So far, Zerg seemed in control, been keeping center stage. Landed a couple of strong hits. Oof. Overcommits with that uh, side B. Up smash coming out a bit too early there again from Piazzi. It's a good option, but you have to time it so that uh, it's going to catch them on the way up. If they're still grabbing ledge by the time it comes out, 
not really getting any benefit, and you're going to be in the recovery frames off, off the end of it. There's the flurry attack from Zerg. Trying to pick her up with the arrows here. Oh, down tilt into up tilt, into another up tilt. Oh, I love the, the combo setups. Just has not been able to make one of those forward airs land so far. Ooh, a nice up air. There we go, there's that forward air. She's trying to prove me wrong. Piazzi needs a neutral win and needs it soon. Oh, that should be it. I don't think she can recover even with the upbeat. So Zerg got out to a pretty commanding lead in this game too here. Might have found the answer to the Palo. A really early counter coming out of Piazzi. Looks like he's pl trying to play, like, very, very preemptively. Maybe he's on defense, he feels. Maybe he's uh, a little bit scared of the aggression coming in. Good dash attack. Not going to find the up air. The forward air would have connected from that position. But... Rolls around. Oh, missing with the forward tilt twice in a row, too. In that position where you, you miss with one move, it's really easy for your brain to say, oh, well, that should have hit. Do it again. But uh, you have to resist that urge. Because it's really just uh, giving your opponent even more time to get the punish. Ooh, the side B picks him up uh, almost off the top. Zerg. Looking like he doesn't even want to drop the last stock on this one. Huge counter coming out from Piazzi. Tries to go for a really preemptive up smash, and Zerg's not biting. Explosive Light not going to connect there, or there, actually. Great air steer from Zerg to avoid it. As he hits an auto reticle. Gonna need more than that chip damage. <laughs> Gets a lot more than that chip damage with a big charged forward smash. Oh, I love this stuffing it with the neutral air there. Great read. Just for a forward smash, and that was a little bit too much time to give Zerg to react to it, able to shield it, get a forward smash of his own, and level the score at 1-1. One to one. All right. So this next match will not determine the tournament or the set for anybody. However, it will definitely set the momentum for the rest because whoever wins this next one they only need to win one of the next two um, it becomes a lot easier for them their opponent has to win two straight Going through our, our stage striking process here. Is he making some selections here? Get to get back into it shortly. Alright, and we're switching to the Pokemon trainer. 
despite the win on the previous match. Maybe it's a response to the stage selection. Small battlefield is where we end up here. Paltina going to be really oppressive with those neutral layers here. Able to cover the entire platform with that move. Third landing a forward smash. Piazzi in the corner here, throwing out projectiles. Zerg trying to do the same. Ivysaur is known for that playstyle. Zerg whiffs with a big forward smash. Two big forward smash whiffs into the flare blitz from Zerg, which will take Piazzi's first stock. Oh, Zerg. What? Excuse me? Why did that miss? That doesn't make any sense to me. I... Those were two up Bs from right below the ledge and neither one of them hit it? Excuse me? That's upsetting. Okay. Well, hopefully that doesn't tilt him too much here. Zerg finds himself a little bit further behind as a result of that weird recovery... I don't even want to call it a mistake, like... It seemed like he did everything right. Great interrupt from Zerg. Oh, the counter, though, gonna put him back, back off stage. This isn't the end of the world for Zerg. Even if he were to lose this stock right now, which he might, that if... Piazzi just running up smashes that, I think that kills Squirtle. Um, so a bit of a whiffed punish on Piazzi's part, to be honest, but, um, even if he were to lose the stock right there, definitely not an insurmountable lead. Piazzi gets a throw, but, uh, is on the wrong side of the stage to use the, uh, back throw for the KO. Probably would not have KO'd at that point, so I don't blame him for just trying to put him off stage. Great forward smash from Piazzi. Will clean things up, but Zerg comes down with a back air, and it's one-to-one. -one. Dead even. Stock is going to be big for the set. Flamethrower comes out. And the Flare Blitz gets countered. Piazzi in control right now. Oh, whiffs with the dash attack. I actually thought that was going to hit myself. Great forward air. Puts him on the platform. Oh, if he'd been a little bit more patient and just tried to neutral air up through the bottom of it. Definitely would have caught him. Oof, that roll. Lucky that he got away with it. The, uh, it looked like Zerg actually anticipated it and just whiffed. Definitely might be some uh, latency things going on here, because I think uh, both players missing a few moves here just as a result of not knowing what side of their opponent they were really on at the time. Oh, if Palatina's got to come in with a back air in that situation, keep yourself safe. Um... And she she just lands on top of the up smash, and Zerg takes her out off the top. So that's going to be 2-1 in favor of Zerg. He's going to have the momentum going into the next two matches here. Zerg takes one more. The tournament here is over. And they are the winner of the gaming mouse, gaming keyboard, and blue microphone. Piazzi, even if they lose, still not going away empty-handed. They will get a wireless gaming headset and an LED webcam, which is hype. You'll love to see prizing like that. That's like... It, it's one thing to get, like... Get, like, a swag bag, get, like, some, some Nintendo merch or something, but, like, those are things that you could very easily, you know, build into your computer setup. You know, that's the sort of thing that uh, you can start streaming with. It's really, really cool that they're willing to give that sort of th that sort of prizing away. I think those are great options and great support from the school to be putting those up.
All right, so we've seen the Pokemon trainer pan out. We've seen the pit pan out. Piazzi's been sticking with the Palutena so far. And switches it up to the Corrin against the Donkey Kong. All right. So, good news is he's picked the correct gender for Corrin. I can definitely respect the pink color. It matches up really well with the sword. And then we've got our white Donkey Kong coming in from Zerg. Was actually a Corrin main uh, before I switched to Palu. Uh, very fun character, just it, the, the move speed seemed a little bit too little for me. Oof, Zerg kind of going to town on that first stock, so... Piazzi, he is going to benefit from some great combo setups against this character. The forward air, the down tilt, the up air are all going to be great party starters for him to get something going here. Um, but he has to be establishing his space. You know, a runoff forward air there, um, maybe a falling neutral air, something like that. you, you got to make it so that the Donkey Kong doesn't feel comfortable approaching you. Um, the, the Lance is a great KO option. Um, it's a great option for when you need to get out of some place and you want to just do it with a strong hitbox in front of you. But uh, as an approach option, because of the downward angle on it, it doesn't actually go as far as you would think it does. You have to watch out for that forward smash. That forward smash is nasty long. Oh, the up smash is going to take Piazzi's second stock for uh, Zerg has lost his first. I kind of respect going for the up B there. Um, not the greatest recognition that Zerg wasn't in position to get hit by it, but like at, at, at this point, you've got to be going for something that is that high commitment to just get the stock out of there and bring yourself back into this. So the decision to go for it, I 100% respect. I, I honestly probably go for that way more often than I should, so <laughs> maybe my recommendation is a bit overzealous, but... Good patience, going for the low recovery this time. Not getting caught out by the edge guard, but a little too little too late. Zerg able to catch him with the forward smash on the neutral getup. And Zerg is the winner of this Florida Atlantic University Smash Each Sports Open. Each Sports, yes. I, I, I definitely said that. Anyway, congratulations to Zerg. Zerg will be the winner of a gaming keyboard, a gaming mouse, and a blue microphone. Big congrats to Piazzi as well for bringing home the wireless gaming headset and the LED webcam. Also an awesome showing from them. Lots of different characters we got to see. Some pretty solid play from everybody involved. So thank you so much, everybody. Uh, quick reminder that there is another Smash tournament that's going to be happening at 8 p.m. you guys' time. So... Come on down, same Discord, same everything. Um, because of a, a weird fluke with the way that the uh, NBA 2K tournament went that was supposed to be at that time, uh, we get all of the prizing from their tournament as well. So um, if you weren't able to compete in this first one, come on down for the second one. Um, we'll be able to, you know, get you in in that time. And uh, also, you know, maybe invite some friends or something like that. Even if you were in this one and didn't get to win any of the prizes and you want some, come on down, give, give it a second crack, you know? So we're going to be back for that. Um, I'll have to go and check and see that we're on the same stream. It might be a different one, so bear that in mind. You need to be in the Discord uh, if you want to be a part of this. So make sure that uh, if you haven't been, you go and check that out. But that is going to be it for us for now. Uh, we'll see you guys again later on today for a little bit more Smash. So thanks so much, everybody. You have been a fantastic audience. It's been a lot of fun casting with you. Um, and uh, also a special shout out to Syncrity for being our TO, running the bracket and everything, keeping things running smoothly. So tip of the cap to him as well. Thank you, everybody, so much for being a part of this. I am Jem. And this is me signing off on behalf of Bravest Esports. Thanks for watching, everybody.